I'd like to recognize our two witnesses and both our members of Congress on our first panel. Our first witness is the Honorable Bill Cassidy, who represents Louisiana's 6th Congressional District. Prior to his election to Congress, Representative Cassidy served in the Louisiana State Senate. He also served as an associate professor of medicine at Louisiana State University and taught doctors in training at the Earl Long Hospital in Baton Rouge. Representative Cassidy serves on the Energy and Commerce Committee and is a co-chair of the Bipartisan Congressional Dyslexia Caucus. Representative Cassidy received his undergraduate medical degrees from Louisiana State University. Our next... Uh, thank you, Chairman Smith and Ranking Member Johnson, for inviting me to speak for us to be here for this bipartisan meeting to bring attention to the science of dyslexia. Um, as you said, Mr. Chairman, 20% of the U.S. population is dyslexic, dyslexia affecting as many as 10 million children, boys, girls, all ethnic, socioeconomic, and geographic regions of our country. Uh, it's important to me as a parent, as a congressman, A couple years ago, my youngest daughter was diagnosed with dyslexia. I shouldn't be upset because it is only a diagnosis. On the other hand, the struggles we had to do to have my daughter accommodated were something that I wouldn't care for for other parents. So again, I thank you. Now, perhaps about concerns about my daughter and my constituents' children, uh, my wife and I set out to learn as much as we could about dyslexia. And we were amazed how much is known and yet not incorporated into public policy. Once more, thank you for highlighting the science. As a result, my wife came up, uh, Deborah Stark is here, and uh, um, you know, um, uh, Deborah uh, her, has a child with Pete Stark with dyslexia, and my wife came to a conference that she, spo she sponsored here with uh, the Shaywitzes, and uh, Pete and I are good husbands. We did exactly what our wives told us to do. Uh, we co-founded the Congressional Dyslexia Caucus. Pete's left Congress, and so now Julia co, uh, is also the co-chair, uh, and I appreciate that. And the purpose of the caucus is to educate other members of Congress and advance policies. I'm sorry. Uh, to advance policies to break down barriers felt by dyslexics. Now, I firmly believe by raising awareness of dyslexia, we can change the way we educate our children and assist millions of children onto the pathway of success. Now, part of this is the resolution that the two of us introduced. It urges the House of Representatives to call upon schools, along with state and local educational agencies, to address the implications dyslexia has on a student's education. And we now have over 100 members of Congress um, on this resolution. Now, dyslexia robs an individual of the ability to read quickly and automatically and to retrieve spoken words easily, but it does not dampen their creativity and ingenuity. As you mentioned, some of the best and brightest among us are dyslexics. A few examples, Charles Schwab and the late Steve Jobs. Now, if dyslexia is identified in elementary school and appropriate resources made available, America can have more teachers, scientists, entrepreneurs, Charles Schwab's, and Stephen Jobs. Now, science shows that the reading pathway in the brain of those who are dyslexic is different. MRIs show a specific disruption of the reading system. Those affected need an evidence-based curriculum addressing this reading disruption. Now, if, uh, unless accommodations are made, the curriculums and trained teachers are applied that correspond to the science of dyslexia children languish in the classroom. A one-size-fits-all approach does not meet the needs of a dyslexic. Now, for those with money, there are excellent schools in areas of our country where your child will learn to read and have all the opportunities that reading allows. But if a family cannot afford the ten dollars to $50,000 annual tuition, the option is often a traditional public school in which dyslexics are mainstreamed which is to say they don't have this particular curriculum, will not likely receive the remediation they need and have the future that the inability to read predicts. So I applaud schools and educators who have embraced science by providing students with a proper educational environment and curriculum
that allows them to thrive personally and academically. There are schools in Louisiana, like the Louisiana Key Academy, we'll hear from a parent whose child attends that school in Baton Rouge, and the Max Charter School in Thibodeau, Louisiana, that specialize in teaching dyslexic students. But these schools are too few and far between. We need more schools to embrace and replicate this model so that students can achieve their fullest potential. You mentioned there is a festive attitude. There is a festive attitude. If you're a parent or a child who's had this condition and no one ever seemed to acknowledge it, the science was hocus pocus, they didn't accept it, even though the science is real, you are celebrating that this committee is elevating the status of that science. So I believe that we can come together on behalf of the children we love, the nation we serve, and work on a bipartisan and bicameral capacity. Greater strides need to be made in ensuring that every dyslexic child and adult has a chance to read, learn, to demonstrate and to realize his or her full potential. So thank you again for holding this hearing. Given the science behind dyslexia, the attention it deserves, hopefully our work with the resolution, the caucus, and this hearing will have a positive impact on Poland society and everyone striving to learn with dyslexia. Thank you, Dr. Cassidy. And